Hey everybody, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a Python programming tutorial and I had some comments uh, DM to me on YouTube lately about if there's a way I could do a video to mess around with some things with probability. So I thought, let's do that today. What a great idea. I've been doing a lot of design tutorials lately. I don't have a coding class I'm teaching right now this semester, so that's kind of why I've been more on the Photoshop and Illustrator side of things lately and thought we'd sprinkle in some coding here and we'll get started. So probability, I thought the two best ways to maybe get started with this would be with coin flips and dice rolls. So let's begin with the coin flip idea import random so this is our library that allows us to choose things at random in Python and I'll make a variable that I'll call coin and it is actually going to be just a list with two items in it heads and tails so you can probably figure out where we're going with this to begin with um, I will then make a variable called heads, which will be a float of zero for the beginning value. So little assignment statement there. And a variable called tails, which will also be a float of zero. And then we can use flips for a variable and this will be integer input how many times would you like to flip a coin so in case you don't want to just do the process of flipping a coin over and over we'll just have Python do this for us save us some time um, then we can use a for loop for X in range between 0 and flips, which is our variable that we ask the user to create in there for us. And we use a colon, then enter, and it automatically should tab over if you're using PyCharm or most text editors. But it is tabbed over. And then we'll say each time that there's an instance between 0 and how many numbers are being flipped, then we'll say um, result is equal to, and we'll say random dot choice of coin. So it's going to pick something at random in there, which is one of two choices in this case. That's going to happen each time that it goes through this loop. Then we also are going to say if result is equal to equal to heads and then in that case we're going to add a variable we're going to add a value to heads we're just going to add one to it and that's how we're going to keep track of how many times uh, we flipped heads with this so heads is equal to heads plus one and if it's not a head, it's a tail, right? So else tails is equal to tails plus one. That's our basic script. That's what's going on uh, with the program. Now we just need to print the results so we can see what they are. Uh, so we'll say print results from comma flips coin flips to kind of remind us how many times that we flipped the coin in case we forgot and then we could say print amount of heads flipped and then we'll go with a comma and we'll say heads comma and we'll go uh, quotation marks with a colon in there and then a comma and then we'll just use a little formula heads um, divided by the float of 
flips times 100 multiply by 100 and then we'll go comma quotation marks percent all right then I can copy this and paste this down here and just change a few things tails tails and tails all right let's give this a try running the program open up the little interpreter down here and then go up here to run run and probability activity how many times would I like to flip the coin let's start off with just two all right so in this case we did get a pretty even, we got the perfect distribution you know it wouldn't be uncommon to see two heads flipped in a row or two tails flipped in a row and obviously as you would expect the results would get more accurate the more times that you flip the coin all right so here it is let's try something like six see what happens here wow perfect again this never would happen all right let's try ten all right a little variable action here so um, in this case amount of heads flipped we got six sixty percent four forty percent I don't know if any of you have ever had to do that for class where your math teacher assigned you find a coin at home and get all these results so really you could print the results each time and keep track of that if you wanted to but uh, you know if you run this program and you wanted to get 10,000 results just instantly right there we got 10,000 results and we see that we have 4,900 for the amount of heads flipped and the amount of tails flipped 5,100 so 49 percent to 51 percent that's the first part that I wanted to show you for this uh, the second thing that I thought would be kind of cool to play around with would be uh, like using a dice so similar process just a few things differently and again there are, there are a ton of different ways you could do this this just kind of short notice and off the top of my head what I thought would work well for this activity uh, so here we have this probability activity too I just want to keep these separate and then I can use from random import randint I want to use randint because I want to generate random numbers I could have made a list with six integers in there but this works a little bit better uh, in this case so we have that module up there that library we want to draw from I'm gonna make an assignment statement roll is equal to integer input how many times would you like to roll the dice alright and I think that'll work and I will create an empty list so results which I'm gonna fill that list with the results as they are being rolled so to define an empty list you just put the empty brackets there you don't have to have anything in a list when you're defining it it could be empty to start with and we'll go 4x in range 0 comma roll that's similar we're starting it off the same way we did with the dice uh, and we'll say this time though results dot append so we're gonna append that list we're gonna add something to it and what are we gonna add in there well we are going to add randint one comma six a random integer so you're gonna be one two three four five and six just chosen at random by Python for us all right so that'll be the first thing that we want to do um, 
If we decide to do five rolls, it'll add five numbers to our results list as list items. Okay, then to print these results, we could say print max of max results. So that's one thing we can do there uh, to find out the highest roll that we got. And then we can print out uh, the min. So I'll just copy and paste and then min. Take out the key that I bumped right there. All right. And then we can also find the average. Now, in, there's not just a regular average on here. So I can go print average and then comma. And then I'll go sum of the results. So it's going to add everything up in the results list. It's very similar to what you would use for like Microsoft Excel when you're using formulas and functions. Um, and then I'm going to put slash. Then I can go length, L-E-N, divided by the length. So the, just using our mathematical knowledge, adding them all up, divided by the number from the results list. There's our calculations printed out for that. Now in this case, maybe it is something useful to know how many times that we rolled each number. And if we want to do this kind of the short and sweet way, 4x in range, 1 comma 7, so in this case, it's finding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The, the range of 6, but starting with number 1. And then for each one of those instances, we could say print times x rolled. All right, so the first time that it goes through, let's say I say this is going to happen three times. Well, the first instance um or I'm sorry if I if I'm going through this if I roll however many times it doesn't matter but it's going to say this is how many times that one was rolled because the first instance is one and then the x is right there and then it's going to say all right times two is rolled because two is going to be the second instance in that range of six starting with number one all right so this top, this top part up here was, you know, finding out how many times you're rolling. Then this here is finding some results by the numbers that were available to be rolled. Um, so the number of times that that number rolled, I could put a comma there. And then I will say results from our results list dot count parentheses x so this is how you search for something in a list if I was looking for a word I type the word there but if I use x which is right here and this number is automatically updating 1 through 6 then it's automatically gonna find number 1 the first time and then print how many times it was rolled then the same for number 2 so I think that will probably be the shortest way uh, to type that for that example. All right, let's take a look and see if everything works. Save my progress here, go up here to run and run. This one is probability activity two. How many times would you like to roll the dice? All right, so if I'm gonna roll three times to start off with and I hit enter. All right, let's look at our results. So in this case, the max was 2. The min was 1. So my highest dice roll was a 2. My lowest was 1. My average roll was 1.3 repeating. And I had 3 rolls. And 2 plus 1 is 3. So it did roll the right amount of times. And you can see how this works. So it's like times that this showed up. 1 showed up in that list two times two showed up in that list one time three four five and six showed up no times 
So that doesn't give us very good results. If we try it again, and let's say we're going to go for six. All right, not too bad really for just six rolls. So we did get um, the max of five. The lowest was one. We got a one. We got a two. We got two fours. We got two fives. So you can also see which numbers showed up the most often. And then again, if you go 10,000 or some big number, boom, just instantly, as expected, I would hope with 10,000 rolls, we would get a six and a one and get some of each number, and we sure did. So um, the average roll was 3.5 in this case. And um, you can see just by looking at the numbers too, relatively close, we rolled a few more sixes. Hopefully that can get you started playing around with probability and and coming up with ideas from for some experiments with Python where you can test out probability of different things. Um, and again, you can just take this and go whatever direction you want with it. Let me know if this is helpful or if it's not helpful or you're looking for something else. Um, you know, if, if I need to go in a different direction, I sure can. But otherwise, hopefully this helps you out and is something that you can use. And I really appreciate you watching. Hope you all have a great day and we'll catch you on the next video.